So this is the AP2 progress check question number two from the thermodynamics unit. So this is our typical cylinder piston problem. Uh, make sure you know these uh, really well. I would expect to see something like this. So um, anyways, the first question is saying basically you have this um, piston here in a cylinder and you're, you're just going to let it go. And it wants to, you to essentially draw the FBD on it. Okay, so the piston itself does have a weight, so we can draw kind of the weight of the piston coming down. Uh, the gases on the inside, right, these gases are going to exert an upward force due to their pressure. So we can say pressure from, actually we, we want to put this in terms of force, so force of the gas going up. And then you also have gases on top, right, the atmosphere itself. So there should also be a force of the atmosphere coming down. Now they don't ask you to draw this to scale, um, so yeah, that doesn't matter too much as long as you have the directions here. And actually it's unclear whether it's going to move up or down once you let go of the piston. So let's look at question B. In this one we have two processes, process X and Y. X is isothermal, so remember isothermal means constant temperature. Constant temperature means that the, the U, the internal energy, is the same, is also constant. Remember, U, uh, U is proportional to the temperature. So the greater the temperature, the greater the internal energy. Therefore, for process X, let's label this, this is process X, for process X, temperature is the same, therefore the change in temperature is also going to be the same. There's going to be no change, right? No change in internal energy. Now process Y, this is an interesting question because it does end up at the same final temperature, right? If at point 1 and point 2 we just said that it's the same temperature all along X, that means that point 1 and 2 are the same temperature which means Y ends up at the same temperature. So the way they phrase this, it's kind of unclear, the delta U for Y from 1 to 2 is actually um, also zero is going to be zero as well. So delta U is zero from the beginning to the end. But along the way it's actually not, it's changing, right? I mean it has to change. If X is staying the same then something must be happening with Y. So what's actually happening is, well you, let's just look, let's look right here. So right here if you look at the same volume, Y is at a higher pressure. And so since we know PV equals NRT, PV equals NRT, that means the higher pressure, the higher temperature, okay? So this temperature here must be higher at that point, okay? So the temperature is actually increasing, and then um, here actually it's going to decrease again. We know it has to end up at the same temperature. So from here to here the temperature is going up, from here to here the temperature is going down, back to the original. And so it's kind of unclear what they're looking for, but I would say, you know, describe this as delta U or U is changing, is increasing first and then decreases. Same thing with temperature, but in the end, it ends up at the same U from 1 to 2. Okay? And so the temperature goes up, temperature goes down, but it ends up at the same place for both. So last question is ask, asking you to actually calculate the work for um, just process Y here. So recall you could use work equals negative pressure times the change in volume. Now in this case the pressure is actually changing, right? So you could um, do, you know, approximately equal to the average pressure. Actually, in this case, it's going to be exactly equal to it because it's a, um, it's a nice line. Um, for x, if you want to find it, you kind of have to, would have to do an average, and it would just be an approximate. Unless, of course, you use integration. But anyways, um, remember the key thing, and actually I'm going to solve this a different way. The key thing is we're really looking for the area underneath this entire curve for y. 
And so I think I'm just going to solve it this way just so you can see it and then you can check this one on your own to see if it works as well. So let's just find the area. So this is a trapezoid. Uh, usually with my trapezoids I like instead changing them into rectangles and triangles. So we have two triangles, right? We have this one which has a side of 5 to 1. So that's going to be a difference of 4. So we're going to go 4 and then um, this has a base of 0.05 to 0.01 so that would be 0.04 and then of course the triangle so we'll go one half okay so that's going to give me the area of this and then we want to find this little rectangle here so that's simply just going to be 1 and 0.04 so we'll go plus 1 times 0.04 okay and actually all this I forgot is times 10 to the fifth so this whole thing times 10 to the fifth so when you do that, plug it in and you get, um, oops, I didn't write it down. Uh, I think it's 1.2 times 10 to the fourth joules. Okay, and again, they're asking, what are they asking, on or by? So this is by, um, so this is already by, right? Because we're increasing it, we're going this direction, volume's increasing, so we know it should be done by. Okay, all right, so anyway, yeah, go ahead and check this. With the average, see if you get the same answer, you should get the exact same answer we did. Let me know if you have any questions.